No one is actually dead until the ripples they cause in the world die away. Terry Pratchett. Death is not the opposite of life, but a part of it. Haruki Murakami. We all die. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Chuck Palunik. It is not the length of life, but the depth of life. Ralph Waldo Emerson. From these quotes, it's clear the world has no answer for death. It can't deal with its reality, so it has to explain its presence away somehow. The most common ways are they assimilated into the natural order of creation, that death is as natural as life. Or they appeal to a legacy, that you do something in your life that can last long after you're gone. But none of those really deal with the reality of death. Who cares if you have a legacy that lives on after you die? You're dead. The same with assimilating into the natural order sort of defies the idea in the Bible that death was not intended from the beginning that death is a consequence of sin. So the Bible doesn't talk the way the world does. Today is another one of those Christian days for us that if you wandered in off the street and this was the first service you attended, we would seem like a very strange people. Maybe seeming like we're making light of death on one hand, Or maybe they think that we're just pretending about the eternal life to make ourselves feel better, because often that's what the world does. But the Bible does not do this. The Bible calls a thing what it is. Death is a tragic result of sin. For the wages of sin is death, Paul tells us in Romans 6. It wasn't intended from the beginning, but because of Adam and Eve's sin, We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and now death has entered into creation. And every single person here, either directly or indirectly, has been touched by that reality, that consequence. My namesake, Adam Thompson, was my grandfather on my dad's side, who I was named after because he had a heart attack and died about six months before I was born never got to meet him. And since I became a pastor, it's now been seven years, both my mother's parents have also passed away in the faith, Bob and Opal Spellmeyer. And while I was in high school, there was a tragic accident with some of the students in my class. They were on their way to a state softball tournament and were tragically three of them killed in a car accident sophomores in high school. And in those moments, we struggle to deal with the reality of death, not only when it's unexpected and tragic in the world's eyes because of youth or circumstance, but just in general. Even when it's expected, it still hurts. Each one of you, I'm sure, could recount similar experiences and are thinking of similar names in your mind right now. Maybe it's a loved one who passed away just recently, within the last year. Maybe it's somebody who passed away a few years ago. You feel like everybody else has moved on, but they still come to your mind. Death is a tragedy of sin. It's a tragic consequence of our fall into sin. Yet today, as we gather and remember the saints who have died in the faith, today is actually not about death. It's about life, because death is the shallow and temporary truth of today. It does hurt. We're not going to try and pretend that it isn't there and that it doesn't hurt. It's okay to feel the sadness you feel and the sorrow over the loss, but these feelings are temporary ones. St. Paul reminds us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, For we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others 
do, who have no hope. He doesn't say we don't grieve, we do. But we don't grieve like anyone else. We grieve as only the disciples of Jesus can, with hope. Because our grief is swallowed up in His victory over death. We have the victory over death in Christ. It turns out where the world has no answers, we have an answer. An answer given us from God Himself. All the way back in Genesis chapter 3 where it all began with the fall into sin, before God pronounces judgment and the statement of, for dust you are and to dust you shall return, He promises a Savior in verse 15. For the offspring of Eve, there will be redemption. In Romans 6, where we get the famous phrase, the wages of sin is death, in the very same verse, the next words echo the deeper truth of today. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Bible is clear. Death is real, and it is an awful reality. It's part of our fallen creation because of our sin, but it wasn't meant to be. The Bible also tells us of a very real hope and a very real victory that has overcome that death, that has swallowed it up in the victory of Christ. We don't have to explain its presence away or run away from it, but we can face it in hope because of the victory won in Jesus. I always love the reading in Revelation 7 because it gives such a beautiful picture of the hope that we have in Jesus. That on earth we are sealed by the seal of our God that protects us from destruction. The very beginning of that chapter, there are four angels holding back the winds the winds that are going to come onto the earth to carry out the destruction that the justice of God demands on a sinful and fallen creation, but not for those sealed by God. So on earth, the church is protected with a seal of God that we know comes upon us in our baptism, His very name, marking us as His own. That's why for those of the, our loved ones who die in the faith, at their baptisms, we light the Christ candle in remembrance of that baptism and that promise and that seal. And then we transition into the vision of the church triumphant in verse 9. Those who are sealed now enter into glory. And the last day is a day of victory and of life, of joy and hope into eternity gathered in great numbers from all over the world, every nation, every language, in the presence of God and praising our Lord. And in that day, they're declaring loudly and boldly, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I want you to say that with me. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. But that is our chorus today. Ever since Jesus rose from the dead that first Easter, that reality has been true. And yet we still await with eager anticipation of the fulfillment of the new creation and this eternal life and the return of our Lord. When those of faith die, their death is real and it hurts. Death is still the evil consequence of sin, but it is an enemy that is now defeated in Jesus. Now in death, those who have faith in Christ, they depart and they are with Christ. Maybe we'd like the Bible to say more about what's going on between when they die and when He returns, but it does tell us that like the thief on the cross, today they're with Jesus in paradise, freed from the struggle and the tribulation of the sinful flesh. And like us, they await the day of the Lord when they will be raised bodily from the dead and renewed along with all of creation and the new heavens and the new earth. 
In our Revelation 7 reading, they are the ones that are surrounding the throne on that day. And until now, they cry out, how long, O Lord, just like we do, until He returns. That is our great hope. Our great hope as Christians isn't our individual death and going to heaven to be with Christ. Our great hope is the day of the Lord when Christ returns and everyone is raised from the dead and made new in a new heavens and a new earth. That is our hope today that conquers the despair and hurt of death, swallowed up in the total victory of Christ. So when you read Revelation 7 in the future, you can know that the ones surrounding the throne of the Lamb, who are sheltered in His presence, who hunger and thirst no more, nor any scorching heat strikes them, and God Himself wipes away every tear from their eyes, that's Adam Thompson. That's Bob and Opal Spellmeyer. It's the people in your mind right now whose names are coming to you, freed from sin, having overcome death forever in Christ and in the presence of God. So, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do not be misinformed about those who sleep in death, that you may not grieve as others do without hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep. What is our hope today? That Christ will return, and when He does, He will bodily raise all those who have died in the faith, give us new heavenly bodies like His own with an eternal, unbreakable life rejoicing in the presence of God forevermore. And the picture you see in Revelation 7 will have begun, and it will never end. And we will join in the chorus of heaven once again declaring, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, amen.